Hello and welcome to chapter 4 here on our vehicle series. We're making a lot of really good progress, but we've still got a long ways to go. And this chapter, probably more than any of them, is going to be the most brutal as far as the amount of work concerned, the amount of detail to model, and just the amount of time involved. Uh, this is due to the fact that we're going to be modeling this section right in here, which if we look to our concept by just going to layer 3, you know, we can just, by looking at this, we can tell that there's a lot of work. You know, we've got all these different components in here that make up the engine, things like the exhaust to the wheel mechanism to what looks to be, say, the engine block in here to some of these, maybe vents back here. We've got a lot to do. But we're going to take it piece by piece and work our way through. And obviously, you know, due to just the nature of this, since we can't, you know, look at this from all different angles and exa see exactly how it's made up, we're going to have to do a few things along the way to uh, uh, work on the design as we go and make some creative decisions as far as the construction of this, particularly along the bottom side where we can't see anything. But we'll do our very best to make something that's going to look cool, look good, and look fairly functional. So, let's get started. On this first part, we're going to be doing the easy part, actually, which is detailing the paneling right in here. And the key thing that I want to point out as far as what we need to do with this is we need to make it match this paneling that we did here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and join those two meshes by first selecting this object here, and then I will select this object here by shift right clicking on it, and then I'm going to hit control J to join the meshes. And the reason that I joined it to this one first, uh, because the when you join something, it determines which object is to do to be joined to which one based on which one is your primary selection. So since I selected this one first and then selected this one, you'll notice this is a brighter color of orange and thus is your primary selection. Or it's whichever one is the last object you selected will be your primary in the case you've changed your theme colors or something like that. So this way I can control which object gets joined to which and which one inherits which modifier. So in this case, this one has a subsurf and mirror modifier on it and I want to add those to this one. So I'll just select it, shift select this one and hit control J and that will immediately add the mirror modifier to it, which of course makes our mesh look terrible and lumpy, but that's what we're going to be solving here in a moment. So let's just hit tab to go into edit mode, and first thing I want to do is just select everything and hit W and shade smooth so that we can see that more clearly. And in order to get these to line up correctly, I need to go ahead and basically add in edge loops to match this view as best as possible. So let's do that. Let's first alt right click to select this inner edge loop and double check to see where it's going back. And I just want to go ahead and move that in to right here. And in fact, let's go and hit control shift tab and switch to vertex snap. And then I'm just going to snap that right there by hitting G and holding down control to snap that. And we're actually going to merge these vertices. And then I can go ahead and select everything, W and remove doubles. Or if you want to speed up the process, just go to mesh and auto merge editing. And that will, anytime you say move something on top of one, it'll automatically merge those. If, so if I take this vertex, hold down control, snap to right there, soon as I left click, it merges those vertices. And so at some points in the editing process, this can be really beneficial as it allows you to do things quicker. So I'm now going to go ahead and do that with these next few sets but I want to be careful where I merge them. This next loop is this one here, and I can see that it's going to best line up both with the proximity of the vertices, but also with the shape if I merge it to this one here. But if I were to just say snap that to right there, you'll notice that this vertex back in here goes basically right up to this edge, which I don't want to do. So what I'm going to do is just move these two vertices and deselect these. So to deselect them, I'll just hit B, middle click and drag to deselect those, and then I'll hit G, hold down control, and left click to snap right there. You'll notice it automatically merged. And then I'll go on to my next loop, which is this one here, which you can see is going to line up perfectly with our creased edge loop. And again, I'm only going to move those two vertices. So I'm going to zoom out so I can see everything. I'll hit B, and then middle click and drag, and draw across that to deselect it. And then I'll zoom back in, and hold hit G, hold down control, snap to there. And then I'm real quick just going to do that with these next few ones. I'll do this one here, and maybe I'll select these two, snap them to right there, and then these ones, I will go ahead and just select this vertex and snap it to right there and automatically merge those. So now I need to go ahead and add in my extra edge loops to join these together. Let's just start at the top, and I can see I've got two right in here, so I'll first 
add in a loop, slide it up to about right there, and then I'm going to first merge it to the outer one. So I'll just hold down control, snap to right there. And then before I do anything, let's zoom back to the back here and kind of see what this has done. You'll notice that this one has moved above this. So I'll just hit G, Z, snap to right there to bring it down level, which should work pretty well as far as the positioning. Uh, so it's, you know, it's kind of sloping in here and then it gets sharper and sharper. And if we hit 3 to go to side view, we can kind of see that that's going to be the case right in here anyway. So that works out well. Then we can go ahead and add in another edge loop right across it. Whoops, wrong one. Snapped right there, slide it just about all the way over to there. And then I will snap to there, merge those. So now we've got that line going on up. Add in another loop here, right click. And then the way I'm going to solve this, I want these to basically stay where they are. So I'm first just going to hit Alt S, which will scale out along the normal. So I can just kind of smooth out this uh, flat area that we've then created when we added that loop. And then I'll deselect this portion by hitting B and middle click and drag. And then I will just snap those over to right there, which leaves me with a nice clean mesh. And so now I can do the same thing right down here. I'll first add another edge loop, move it down approximately into place, double check where things are back here and everything looks pretty good and so i can just snap that i'll add in another one right up to this edge basically and then snap that and everything looks good going back and then let's go ahead and i'm just going to add in say two edge loops here and again i'll hit alt s to scale them out so i've got a nice rounded form just about like that and i can go ahead and select these two vertices snap that one to there deselect that snap that to there and there we go. And then I need to add in another one right up to this edge, which I just happened to position it just perfectly such that it automatically grabbed that. And then the last thing that I need to do, which you'll notice right now, I could almost get away just leaving my mesh like this, but I'll definitely be doing a lot more work. Uh, I need to go ahead and extrude in a couple of loops to fit this. So I'll just hit, with this selected, I hit Alt right click to select it. And then I deselect these two vertices by shift right clicking on them. And I'll just hit E to extrude, hold down control, snap to right there. E to control, e, e to extrude, and then hold down control, snap to right there. And that sets that up, so now my meshes are connected. But what I need to go ahead and do now is match the creases. So let's go ahead, I'm going to select this vertex. I'm going to zoom all the way over to the other side. And with them selected, I'm going to hit W and select vertex path. And now I can hit uh, Shift E and 1, such that these line up. And just to double check, we can Alt right click select that, hit N. And we can see that those were actually set to 0.8. So I'm just going to select the entire loop and set this down to 0.8. And then I'll do the same thing here. So I'll just put 0.8. And on this one, and again, I can see that it's 0.8. And the reason I can see that it's 0.8 is these ones over here don't have any crease. Whereas these ones, like if I were to select, say, just this edge, if I could select the right vertices, I'll notice that it's right at 0.8. But if I alt right click select the entire loop, I see it's at 0.4 or something like that. And that's because it's at this value is being averaged between the crease of all of my selected edges. And since these ones here don't have any creasing applied, then it goes ahead and sets it to 0.4 or something between based on what everything else is set to. Okay, so that's making really good progress just like that. Pretty quick and easy. But what I want to do now is to go in and start matching this shape. So you can see right in here, I've got this shape going on back that I'm not fitting right now. So let's go ahead and start by, say, selecting these four vertices. And then I'll just move them down a little bit. Maybe I'll move these down just a bit to fit that. Move this vertex down. I'm just moving them along the Z axis by selecting them, hitting G. And maybe I'll move these back to match this angle right in here. And that looks a little better as far as that point is concerned. Uh, I could go ahead and rotate this just a little, maybe scale along the z-axis a little bit by hitting s and then z just to match this angle and so that this isn't at a sharp angle where this is all nice and soft. It just helps to average those out. Uh, it's always a good idea to try and keep your vertices roughly parallel to each other as much as possible, or your edges parallel to each other. I now want to go ahead and add in, uh, let's start by saying two edge loops right in here, which will then allow me to match these curvatures in here. Let's first just pull this down along the z-axis. And maybe I'll go ahead and pull these ones up a little bit to match this line. And you'll notice on the bottom here, I need to go ahead and bring this back up. And I'll do this in two steps with these vertices to match that curve. And I did that in two steps just so that I could match 
the distribution roughly between those to make them nice and even. I'll go ahead and take this edge loop. I'll pull it down. Actually, I'm going to just hit S and Z, scale along the Z axis a bit, quite a bit actually. Then I'll pull this down to about right there. And you'll notice that this part is now way too small. So I'm going to hit B and middle click and drag across these vertices starting at the seam. And then I'll hit S and Z, scale them back up, pull it back up. And then you'll notice I've got this kind of arch in here. So I want those to be nice and parallel to follow that same curve. So I'll rotate a little bit more to right about there. And I'll save my file periodically. So that's matching it nicely. I'm going to add, I'm going to slide actually this edge loop down a little. So I hit control E and edge slide, bring it down to about right there. And then I want to deselect everything with A and I'll select these vertices. I'm going to pull them up about like that and about like that. So that's what I get this curve in here. So I've got a double curve kind of. Maybe I could pull these ones down just a bit more. Pull this vertex up. I've noticed I've got a kind of a highlight line here that I can follow with these edges to keep things nice and consistent. And this is actually really important for these kinds of details because those lines are the ones that are going to show up in the reflections on your surface and things like that when you go in to actually render the vehicle. And so trying to keep those things consistent is actually very important. And let's see, I'll go ahead and add in another edge loop here, primarily just so I can keep the distribution between all of these fairly nice and even. Maybe I'll rotate that a little to even things out and thus scale down along the z-axis as well. And I'll notice that this angle right in here is no longer right. First off, I need to move these up about like that. Same thing here. Move those up. And again, right here. And then I need to do the same thing on all these. There we are. And on these ones right here. Pull them up along the z-axis. I'll deselect that one and then pull this one back over here. Maybe rotate a little bit to match that last angle. That looks good. Uh, I want to scale this one up along the z-axis just a bit to match all of our curves. That looks good. Uh, I want to go ahead and flatten out this surface from this point, or basically all of these. And so I'm going to select all these, and then I'm going to deselect starting or right back in here where everything's already kind of flat. And now I'm, let's see, from the side front view, that all looks pretty good. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this loop, or excuse me, this one right here, deselect all these, then rotating around, that one looks nice and flat. Pull that in a little bit, deselect that. Whoops. I had some vertices selected in there. Deselect that one. Uh, actually, you know what What I'll do is I'm going to take this edge loop, deselect these starting here, and then I'm going to hit Control E and Edge Slide and bring this up here a little bit. And then I'll take this one and starting back there, or actually that one's already, yeah, I'll just slide it down just a little bit. Maybe slide these two down a little bit. And that will create a nice flat angle along there that looks really nice. And I could even do the same thing on this one, maybe going from this point here, maybe pull this back along the x-axis just a little bit, maybe hit control E, slide it up a little bit, deselect this one as it's getting really close, slide those up, and maybe I'll slide these two vertices along just a bit. So I get a nice gradual transition. Pull these up along the z-axis where I can see that it's going under the surface. And so my mesh is not staying consistent. Notice these create an arc, whereas these ones create a, a valley. Okay, that looks a little better. And maybe I'll sharpen these just a little bit by selecting them, hitting Control e Edge Slide. And notice now this angle matches a little more too. I can go ahead and do the same thing with this one just a little bit. There we go, that looks nice. So I'll save that. It just adds a little bit more style to it and kind of matches what we have going on back here. Although I'm going to go ahead and slide this up just a bit more. And then I'll slide this one just a little. Help kind of keep that style consistent. Maybe I'll slide this back 
along the x-axis just a little. There we go. So and those lines will help form really nice highlights in our mesh as well. And that should be pretty good. Um, this line is not very consistent all the way back, so I'm going to select these. I'm going to hit Control e Edge Slide, bring it up, bring that up a little bit. I'll take these ones here as well, Control e and Edge Slide. There we go. So that's some of the you know creative decisions that we need to make along the way. You know, even though these look nice and rounded in the concept, I think some of these sharper lines will help give us really nice highlights and give us a slightly nicer effect overall. And so you know we can kind of make those decisions as we go. Now we need to go ahead and pull this section down right here to match this. We'll also pull this down, and then I need to pull this down right here. I also want to go ahead and pull these out. Uh, it's about in here, and these ones we want to match this arc. There we go. Notice I was kind of scaling along the y-axis there a little bit to help line things up. That looks good. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I don't really want to add an edge loop all the way down. And you'll notice that things kind of smooth out in here. So I'm going to select these three. I'm going to hit Control E, Edge Slide, bring this down to right here, pull that out. And then what I want to do, pull that in along the x-axis, kind of flatten it out. Same thing there, pull that in. There we go. So it just kind of softens up as it goes through there. Maybe we could go ahead and move this down a little bit, move it in along the x-axis slightly. Again, keep that transition nice and soft. And... And on this, where we've got the extra thickness right in here. Let's see. That edge is awfully close. Just slide it back just a little bit. And let's see, what is this edge doing? Um, Not a whole lot, but we can go ahead and leave it. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to select all of these edges. And I'm going to hit E to extrude, take it in along the x-axis. In fact, let's just take it in to right here. And I'm going to hit SX and 0, and then take it in again. And let's go ahead and take these in to right there as well. And then we'll grab these two. Pull them in along the x-axis, slide these, whoops, I'll slide these along. I'm just kind of averaging things out. Move that over a little. Move this over. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in another edge loop right here, and then I'm going to add a face like that, and a face like that to make this consistent all the way around. Uh, and then I want to see that's nice and sharp. Okay, I don't want these to be so sharp towards the tip here, so I'm going to hit Control e Edge Slide after selecting them, bring them down a bit. About like that. See, if I add that in, I can kind of follow it back and see where it went and went all the way through there, which I really don't want another loop all the way through there. So I think I'll go ahead and use creases in here. So I'll select this edge. I'm going to hit Shift E and 1, crease that. And then I'm also going to crease this edge here, Shift E and 1. And then to make this a softer transition, I'll add in another edge loop right up to the edge. And I also want to crease this edge to get a nice point right here. So I'll take that up to one. And then I need to fill in these faces back here. I first want to select this loop, 
And I'm going to check where it's going right back here. I'm going to deselect it, say starting everything back to that point. Or actually here, I'll hit Control E, edge slide, bring it out just a little bit. And edge slide a little bit more. Bring it over along the x-axis, say to right there. And then I'll select this one and this one. And again, deselect everything from this point on. And I'll bring it in along the x-axis a bit. Deselect those, bring it in a little bit more, and then I'll snap along the x-axis by hitting G, X, and holding down control to that vertex there. And then I will go ahead and select, say, these two vertices, snap down to right there. Whoops. Except that I want to snap that vertex. And that should work well. Then I can fill in a face right here. And... I can almost fill a face in right there, but let's see if I can just get rid of this edge loop. So I'll just follow it all the way back, and I can see it's going in to right here. So let's first just hit X and delete edge loop, and then let's select this one and this and this. So I'm just Alt-Shift right-clicking on it. I'm going to hit Shift-E and say point, uh, point 0.8 and see if that gets sharp enough, which it really doesn't. So, But let's leave that for the time being and let's fill in a face right here, and then we can add in an edge loop on this side, and that way, oops, nope, that's not quite true. Let's see, this edge loop going all the way back. really doesn't need to be there. So let's select all of this, and all of this, all of this, and all the way back to right there, and this one, and hit X, and delete vertices. And if you zoom in here, you'll notice that you really can't even tell that that doesn't have thickness going straight up, and so that's okay. So now we can add in the edge loop onto that side, and give that effect, and that will make that nice and sharp again. And then we might even select this and go all the way in here and select these ones and hit Shift E and maybe go negative 0.2, which will take it down to 0.8, giving us a slightly softer transition on that. Okay, switching back to side view by hitting 3. I'm going to zoom in here. I want to smooth these out a little bit and then I'll deselect that, that loop right there. I'm going to hit Shift E and 0.8 on that one as well to make sure that's nice and consistent. Same thing right here. Actually, let's select this whole loop and hit N to make sure that's values. And these were at 1. Let's just set that back to 0 0.8. And that looks pretty good. We've got a weird value in here. So let's select this and hit Shift E 0.8 again so that that's consistent on through rather than causing us an interesting artifact in there. And that looks pretty good. I think on this edge, we will just leave it right where it's at, save the file, and this is actually bothering me right here, so I'm going to go ahead and select this again, and I'm going to kind of undo what I did and slide that back up to make that consistent, and then what I'll do to match the design is I'll take this section and I'll pull it back and pull this up to match that circular point right in here. Except I want that to be a nice straight edge. And this isn't even a very strong circular point. It's just a slight arc in there for that piece right there, which we can go ahead and add right now if we just say select these two vertices, hit Shift S, cursor to selected, which will position it uh, horizontally along the x-axis, and then we can move our cursor over here from the side view to hit by hitting uh, left click, then we can hit Shift A, Add Mesh, and Circle. And we need to immediately hit F6 before doing any transformations. We can rotate our view all we want, but before any transformations, click Align to View, although actually we want to do that from the side view. Then we can hit F6 and Align to View, take the vertex count down to, say, 8, the radius to 0.2, and that'll be close enough. Then we can just left click out of there, zoom in, Hit S to scroll, scale it down, 
move it over a little bit, although I'm not going to position it exactly where this is. Instead, I'm going to position it a little bit more in line with our model here. And then I'll select this. I'll hit E to extrude, scale it in just a little bit, and then I'll do that again. And then before doing anything else, I'm going to go ahead. I want to add this kind of seam through there. Uh, so I'm going to hit Control R, add in an, actually add in two edge loops right here, and then I will pull those up to help maintain our. Actually, you know what? We're not going to worry about that because this is going to mess up our form a lot, and you're not really going to see that. It can very easily be added with a bump map. So instead, let's just extrude this in one more time, and then I will fill a face, fill four vertices there, four vertices here. And then I can alt right click to select the last four, hit F to fill a face there. I'll also go ahead and take these. I'm going to scale it out just a bit. I'm going to select this loop as well by alt right clicking on it. I'm going to take these slightly along the X axis to give a slight bulge to it. I'm going to select the inner edge and scale it up to make sure we've got a nice sharp flat point on it. I'll select this one. I'm going to hit E to extrude, take it out just a bit, and then I'll take it in along the X axis a fair bit. Also select the entire thing pull it in along the x-axis such that it's set in just a little bit. I'll select everything, W and Shade Smooth. There we go, just to add that point in there. Let's go and do this front paneling stuff. So first things first, let's just add in an edge loop, bring that up, and then I want to go ahead and add in another edge loop right about in here, which will match or basically be this point Let's go ahead and take the bottom of this down right here. I'm going to take this down along the z-axis, hit 1 to go into front view, and using that same selection, I'm just going to hit B and middle click and drag, deselect that part, move this in a little bit, rotate it a little to match the, the angle in here, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in another edge loop, or actually two more edge loops, and I'm going to hit S and shift Y, to then scale them out, excluding the y-axis, so I can add this nice bulge around the bottom, but not send it either way, or send it along the y-axis at all. And then what I want to do is, uh, I actually want to cut out a shape right in here to match, or actually, no, I'm not going to worry about cutting that out, because uh, you're probably never going to see it, but I do need to pull this out along the x-axis here to go along this shape. And so the way to do that well is I'm going to add in another edge loop right here, pull that out along the x-axis, add in another one here, pull it out a bit. I can pull out this center one. Maybe scale this a little along the x-axis. I'll scale this one along the x-axis. Uh, then I want to go ahead and extrude back this line, but I want to deselect all of these vertices because I'm going to take it back to this vertex by hitting E, hold down control, snap to there, then I'll snap this one down here such that those line, oops, wrong one, snap that to right there so that those line up and then I will select this whole front by selecting first the perimeter edge loops like this and then I can go in and select these manually by shift right clicking on them then I want to hit E to extrude, right click, S to scale down, or actually let's see, let's try the shrink or flatten with, oh that's Alt S actually, um, let's see, we might need to do a little manual work on this. First, let's go ahead and select this edge, and I want to pull it down along the Y axis here, then I want to select this edge deselect everything that's not on the bottom, hit 1, and pull this down. Let's also go in and select the whole back, and then deselect that, and we're going to hit X, delete faces, because we really don't care about any of those. This also needs to come down, or actually no, I guess it doesn't come down, instead there's a piece right through here that will be there. And let's see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this front face, just like that. Then I'll deselect all the back parts. I'll deselect 
all of these and all of these. I can go in here and shift right click to select or yeah, to deselect that loop, reselect this one. And then what I'm gonna do is we are going to temporarily hit S, Y, and 0 to flatten this. Then we're gonna pull it out along the Y axis. I'm gonna hit E to extrude, right click, pull this over a little, or actually I'll first just scale it down a little bit. I'm gonna pull it over along the X axis until this side loop is perfect. Then I'll deselect that. Then I'll pull this one over here. Then I'll deselect that one. And then I'll reposition these ones in the center, just basically a loop at a time. So I can deselect that one. That one's good. Move this one up. That one's good. Move that one up. Deselect it. Move this over. Scale it down a bit. And that looks good. And then I will reselect all of this. And then I can extrude it in along the y-axis just a little bit first, and then again, and then I'll hit X and delete faces, and then I'm going to select all of this, and I'm going to pull it back along the y-axis, I'm gonna rotate it, and I'll rotate this along the Z, local z-axis by double tapping Z, move this back into place roughly, And the bottom there looks pretty good. So I will rotate that a bit, something like that. Then I'll deselect all this in here and then I'll rotate the top around. Deselect that, rotate the, this top some more, deselect that, and then I'll rotate the bot or the inside and pull it up approximately like that. On this edge loop, I might go ahead and deselect that and then slide this in to fit a little better there. I can go ahead and pull these in along the Y axis a bit more there. And that looks pretty good now. Now I can go in and tweak this a bit more on an individual loops basis probably a lot better ways to have handled that but doing it kind of on the fly and made it work. I'm going to slide this bottom loop in by selecting it to get a nice sharp angle right there where it's meeting up with the the windshield. Also notice a small problem right there, just slide that over. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to move this over, maybe rotate around the z-axis a little bit, pull it up to the windshield or to the frame here, and then I'll slide this loop over. Make that nice and sharp. That looks pretty good. I can go ahead and even up that right there. I'm gonna add in another loop right here such that I can bring that over, and then I'll bring that over there. I'm gonna select this inside loop, deselect, all of these and all of that and then that one as well. I just want to bring these out along the x-axis, maybe up a little bit just to smooth out that edge. I'll go ahead and select this and I'm just going to extrude it back a little further and I'll scale it down just to solve any problems that may be there. And that now looks pretty good. I see that this is no longer touching the windshield there, so I can go into, or I'll select this, go into edit mode, let's grab this panel, move it down there a little bit, select this one, move it down, select these, move them down along the z-axis just a little bit, there we go, then I can go in here, and I will select these as well, Slide them in right here and there and there. Maybe I will slide these back along the Y axis. Same thing here, just again, kind of making a couple executive decisions along the way as far as the 
the concept is concerned just to kind of line things up a bit better. I want to try and keep this nice sharp angle in here, so I'm going to add in another loop, pull that around, and then I'll go ahead and hit X and delete that edge loop. So that's kind of con more consistent on the inside edge there. Maybe pull this one out a little bit along the x-axis. Maybe same thing here. Maybe this one I would like to pull in to line up with this edge a little better. And that looks pretty good. So I will save that. And I know you can see more of the inside there, but I'm really not worried about that lining up in this case. Again, you know, we can kind of make those decisions as we go along to what works best in the 3D environment. Pull that over. You know, during during any kind of process like this, when you're working from a 2D concept, you have to make some decisions as you go, just because there are certain things that just don't translate well into 3D uh, at, from from 2D space. And so, you know, you just make those decisions as you need to. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to save that. And let's jump up. Uh, well, let's see, we're actually getting to a pretty good time, so I'm going to save this, uh, and I'll follow up in a part two of this section, uh, just for just to keep things fairly short so you're not sitting through an hour and a half video or two-hour video. So I will stop this and see you in a moment. Alrighty, welcome back after that short break. We're back here on part B for detailing the mid-paneling se section. Uh, we've just about got it done, just basically did this side view, this piece right in here, and now we're ready for this top piece. And actually along with that top piece, we also have this section right in here. And then if we look at our concept, you can see that we also have this portion right in here. So we'll try and get those done in this video. I want to start with this one. So let's select the object, hit tab to go into edit mode, and let's first do some general looking around, kind of see how our mesh is looking. Obviously, you can see we've made some changes to the overall model as far as proportions are concerned in uh, to the the concept. So you know, don't worry about that too much. But as long as we're getting the the general idea down, we should be good to go. Let's first go ahead and add in an edge loop all the way along here. Just Control R, slide it up back to about there. That looks good. And I want to go ahead and be sure that this edge is solid. So I'm going to select these three vertices, hit E to extrude, snap back to that vertex. And remember that I've got auto merge editing on. So those just merge automatically, which you can enable or disable that from right here. And then we'll snap that one. Again, I'm using vertex snap as well. Pull that back and then hit one to go into front view. And let's go ahead and let's make this curve over like it does on the concept. So I'm going to select this loop right here. I'm going to slide that down to about like that. And then let's add in another edge loop. I'm going to slide it all the way up to there. And then I'm just going to, whoops, I don't want to slide all the way or it's going to merge. And actually, let's just position it right about there. We'll move out just a little, deselect this back part, and then we'll pull this up about like that. Switch over to side view. And let's line these up a little bit better, something like that. And then we'll add in one more loop. Again, maybe Alt-S just a little bit to fix the back, deselect the back. And then here on the front, we'll move this over about like that. Move over from the side view to match the angle. And in fact, on the side view here, I want to go ahead and grab these. And we're going to pull this up. Maybe rotate it over a little bit. Go back to here. Select this piece. Move it up a little. And that actually looks pretty much horrendous. And so we're just going to hit Control-Z. Uh, quite a few times to just step back. Now we can only go back so far, but I think, here we go, we just hit our limit. Uh, but let's go ahead and select this loop, and I'm going to hit X and delete edge loop. And we're going to go ahead and select uh, this piece right here first, this loop uh, right uh, right there. And then we'll select these on the bottom. Let's hit one to go into front view, and let's actually just move them over to right here. We're just going to make these butt up against each other rather than overlapping. I think that will work a lot better. I think it'll look better in the long run. I just want to go ahead and select these, deselect that loop in the back. Let's move this back about like that so that this is straighter. will give us a slightly better look, I think. This edge loop, we can pull this over a little bit like that. Let's go ahead and select our front face. Let's hit E to extrude, right click, 
S to scale it down. And then we will hit E to extrude, take it in just a little bit, and then take it in even further to about there. And then we can hit, we can reposition just a little bit, something like that. Then we'll hit X and delete faces. You notice we also have this edge right in here that's coming through. Let's just go ahead and delete those vertices for the time being. You know, we might re-add those later, but for now, we're going to not worry about them. And I notice that this is not quite good enough, so I want to scale this down a bit more. And then we'll scale the interior loop down a bit more. I also want to go ahead and add in, say, two edge loops, one along the bottom here and one along the bottom there to just square those up. And that one I might have added a little bit too close. I also want to go ahead and select the entire bottom here, deselecting that and that. And then we'll select, say, this edge loop right in here. There we go. And we're just going to pull that down along the z-axis, add a bit more thickness right in there. Also, we'll go ahead and add in an edge loop along the mid right through there. Let's also go back in here. And we're just going to, uh, let's pull this back such that it's even. Whoops, except I didn't mean to select that there. I'm just going to pull this back such that it's even with this right in here. I'll go ahead and select these loops as well. Move them over back like that. So now this is all lined up and even. And I'll just select this. And I'm going to hit X and delete faces. And I'll alt right click to select this. Whoops. Got another vertex in here. Delete that vertex. Select the whole set. And I'll hit E to extrude and take it back like so. There we go. And now we will work with that as we need to. We can also take this back down along the z-axis there. Let's take, let's take this top side, make it a little bit thicker. Just pull it up like that. I also want to go ahead and add in another edge loop right around there to sharpen that up. And let's see. We're going to add another edge loop right along the side here too so that we can just butt these up together nicer. And that looks pretty good. Although we really ought to go ahead and select, say, all these these ones here. And let's pull them back just a little bit. And then we'll select this one as well. Pull it back just so that we're roughly matching the same angle that this has here. As you can see, maybe we need to pull this one back a little further. And then we'll pull this one back just a little bit just so that we're roughly matching those together. That looks pretty good now. Okay. Uh, yes, I think that will work out well. I'm going to go ahead and select this edge. I'm going to hit Control E, slide it over just a little bit, something about like that. And then on this section right in here, let's go ahead and add in an edge loop right up to the, actually. Let's add it from this edge here, and then we'll select these, and we're going to hit E to extrude. Uh, no, actually, instead we'll just pull this along the y-axis a little bit, along with this one along the y-axis a little bit. We'll take this one down, and we'll add in another edge loop with Control r slide that up about like that. Then we will take these vertices here, Alt-Shift right-clicking on them, pull this up a little bit, deselect this, Pull that up, deselect the top one, pull it up a bit more. And I want to add another loop right up to that edge. Basically, then I'm going to select this one, pull it down along the z-axis. I'm going to do a little trick. I want to smooth out this angle. So I'm going to hit Control E, edge slide, bring that up to there. And I'll hit Control E, edge slide again. And that will then just smooth that out very nicely. Okay, we need to take this edge here, or these ones basically, and we're just going to rotate them and then pull them over, and we're just going to be sure that we're intersecting that mesh right there. Do the same thing in here. And then I want to go ahead and take this edge right up to there, add another edge loop, slide it down, then I'll select both of these, pull them along the y-axis as well to do that same uh, kind of thing that I did back here. I'm going to also add in another edge loop to sharpen that up, Maybe pull it back just a little bit. Let me do the same thing here. Add in that edge loop, 
sharpen those up. Just looks a little nicer. I'll do the same thing right in there. Okay, that starts to look pretty good. And then what I want to do is add in some depth on this panel. So starting right here, I'm just going to select these. I'm going to hit E to extrude, snap back to there, automatically merge those. And immediately I seem to have an issue. I have a random face right in here, so I'm going to delete that face. And then I can select this. I'm going to add another edge loop, slide it down to there. This way I can just bring these down and I'll select these and I'm going to bring them down just like this. Take it down along the Z axis to right about there where it belongs. Same thing there. Select these, maybe pull them back up. And pull it back in line there and there. And there we go. Maybe we could go ahead and slide these over. So I'll select this one. I'll hit Control E, Edge Slide. Then I'll select this one, deselect that vertex, Control E, and Edge Slide. Bring that over, get a slightly nicer angle right in there. I could select this loop, also slide it up just a little bit to sharpen that, just enough to make those look a little bit nicer in there. And that looks pretty good. I don't like this sharp or this soft angle in here, so I'm going to add in another edge loop. Or actually, you know what? Let's just crease this. Shift E, 0.8, crease that. Same thing right here. Since they're kind of bottom edges, you're not going to see them nearly as much, so we can get away with that. And now what I want to do is I want to add in this paneling right in here, which actually, let's go ahead and this piece, I want to select these. We're going to pull it down along the z-axis. We're going to rotate this and bring it down a fair bit. We can select this interior edge, bring that down, because then I want this piece coming around here, going over both of these. Maybe I'll scale these along the x and a bit along the z because uh, it's going to come around like this, go through those. So let's go ahead and we're going to make it from this piece here. So with this selected, let's actually just say grab all of this back to right here, and we're going to hit P and separate by selection. We'll select this, hit shift space to unmaximize our view. We're going to change this over to the green material. So we can actually just remove the other two. We'll just select it, hit the minus button, hit the minus button again, and now that'll be green. Uh, let's go ahead and add in our subsurf modifier to it. I'm going to keep this as a separate object just to kind of keep things a little cleaner. I can toggle that down, change the subdivisions to level 2, and turn on optimal display. Also hit shift space to maximize my view again, and hit tab to go on edit mode, W, and shade smooth. Then I want to select this. I'll rotate this around. I'm going to take this over here, rotate it about like this, bring it back, take this vertex there. Select this loop, I'm going to hit Control e and Edge Slide, bring it up to right about in there. I'll select the top set of loops, hit X and Delete Vertices, because this is actually the wing right there. Bring this over here, take this up to right about there and there, slide that over, and then I'm going to just take this loop and first move it over a little bit along the x-axis right in there, and then I'm going to hit E to extrude, bring it over and around. Maybe I'll take this one out just a little bit more. Take this, and I'll rotate that even more. Bring that up. Now I'm going to select this edge again, hit E to extrude. And I don't like this kind of auto extrude thing, so I'm just going to right click, and then I'll move it manually, and bring it over here. And I'll rotate a bit more. And then what I want to do is just rotate this again, and I just want to take it straight up back here. So I'll rotate this all the way around to right in there. And then from the side view, bring it back. And if I rotate my view, I can kind of position it about right. Extrude again, pull up, hit three to go to side view, take this up about there. And there we go. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and end it right there as well, such that I've got this nice kind of ring around the, the wing that will work really nicely. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide the wing for the time being while I finish this, just so I can get a better idea of how it's going to look. So 
Now on this, I want to go ahead and take this all the way in such that it'll cover the wings there or these, sorry, these engine pieces or exhaust pieces, kind of whatever they are. I'm going to take this down and over there so it lines up with that edge. Go ahead and hit Control R, add another edge loop, slide that right up to there. And then I'll take this loop or this edge. I'm going to pull it all the way in. And you can see that now that I've done that, I need to go ahead and add thickness to the rest of this. So I'll deselect all this in here. And I'm going to hit E to extrude, snap to there, select that edge, snap to there. Or actually, that really didn't work well. Uh, instead, I'm going to hit E to extrude, snap to there, and then I will select these and extrude and snap to there, select everything, W and, oh, I've already got doubles removed because of the auto merge. Select this loop, deselect that one. I'll rotate this down, pull it down like that. And then I can go ahead and add in another loop along there just to sharpen that up. Maybe deselect these and actually I'll just take these and then I will slide these back just a little bit to soften that up just enough. There we go. I'll take this. I want to pull it all the way in there. Okay, I can go ahead and select these. I'm going to select these four vertices. I'm going to hit W and smooth a couple of times. Just make sure that they're nice and smoothed out and not causing any weird pinching. I'm going to go and add another edge loop in right here. I'll scale down along the Y axis to flatten it out. Add in another one right there. I can go ahead and control E, slide this one down. And I'll slide this one down right up to that edge. Slide this back a little bit here. I'm going to extrude that in along the X axis to about right there. I will delete the top and bottom faces that that has then created. And then I will go ahead and add in another edge loop right up to that edge and right up to that edge, select everything, W and shade smooth. Then I'm gonna select these two edges, I'm gonna hit Shift E and 0.8, so they're sharpened, but since they're on the inside, I can get away with a not quite as smooth effect as the edge loops. I'm also gonna set this to my dark gray, so I'll go ahead and add in another material slot, change the material over to the dark gray and click Assign. There we go. Just adds a little more depth to this, and I'll go ahead and add in another edge loop right up like that to Sharpen this up. I can see I'm not getting a nice rounded shape in here, so I'll select these, pull them out, rotate them a little bit, and try and match, get a nice smooth angle right through there. And there we go, that looks a lot better. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and actually extrude along these shapes. So I'm going to add in another loop right here, slide it down a little bit to match that, deselect this, and then I'm gonna pull that up along there, I'll slide these, these out. And the reason that I wanna do this, because uh, some of you may be thinking that I'm absolutely nuts, but the reason I wanna do it is I can then extrude those out and get some nice extra depth. So I'll first add in a loop, hit Alt S to uh, scale along the normals. I'll scale down a little bit, which will sm fix this angle. Then I'll deselect this and pull that back up just a little bit there. I'll pull these back up a little bit and I'll add in another or a second loop right next to it. I'll go ahead and slide this loop along. Or actually, no, I'll just add in another one. I'll Alt S to scale it out just a bit, scale down a little to help fix my angle. I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna hit Control E, edge slide, bring it up just a little bit. I'm gonna slide this over a little, Control E and edge slide bring it up, I'll select these, move them over just a little bit, take this up, add in another edge loop here, again, Alt S just a little bit, and then scale down just a little bit, maybe scale this one down a little, and then I'll take this and pull that up to right there, then I'll take this one and bring it back in to right about they're trying to keep things fairly nice and smooth as I go. You know, I know I'll need to do a little bit of smoothing in here for sure to get things more like I want them, but that's okay. 
I can go ahead and slide this loop along a little bit. Maybe I'll deselect the top, slide the middle along a bit, and then I'll pull that back out. And judging by the intersections here, I can see approximately how it's looking. Okay, add in another loop right here to bring those along. And that looks pretty good. But on this, I'm going to deselect the bottom, and then I'll Control e and Edge Slide the top so that I get a nice smooth surface around here for the most part. Bring that around there. Maybe select these, rotate them a bit, pull them in a bit. And that starts to look pretty good. I'll select these, pull it over just a little bit along the x-axis. Maybe select these, pull them up a bit. Select this loop, deselect that one, Control e and Edge Slide. Make sure that's nice and smooth. Slide it up there. Take this one. Make sure I've got a nice smooth surface. And then I'll go ahead and add in one last loop, which what I'm gonna, actually I'll just take this one, I'll just extrude it up a little bit, match my angle, and that starts to look pretty good. Now I'm gonna select this edge, and I'm gonna hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S, scale down along the normals, and immediately you'll see that I start to get a much nicer effect in here. Although I will go ahead and smooth these out a little bit. And I'll see if I can take these out a bit. I'm going to go ahead and select this vertex and we hit W and smooth. And I'll pull it back a little like that. I'm trying to get rid of this little bit of a crease you see right in there. Although actually, you know what, I suppose an easier way to do this would just be to um, accept that crease and just accent it a bit. So I could just go in here and say, okay, well, I know there's going to be a crease there. So let's just, you know, make it obvious. Do the same thing here. I could slide this edge back up along here. Maybe take it in a bit. Take these in a bit. We'll just embrace the, the difficulties in some of those parts. There we are, and maybe I'll go ahead and take this piece, bring it up just a little bit more, and that starts to look pretty good. Let's go and hit Alt-H to unhide the wing. And there we go. Okay, I think that pretty much does the paneling for that section. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see. When we're gonna have, we're gonna be doing all the wings in this section as well. Uh, so actually, that will be the next step in this this chapter is to go in and do that. Um, or actually, you know what? We're going to save the wings for a chapter of its own just because we've got so much to do in here. Uh, we'll be sure to update all those things. And so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and let me just take... Oh, actually, no, we're not going to call this done just yet because we forgot to do the grills right in here. So the way that I'm going to do that is let's just select this piece. Let's hit Shift-C to recenter our cursor. Control-W to save our file. I'm going to position my cursor right about in here after hitting Shift-C such that it's centered along the origin. And I'm going to hit Shift A, add mesh, and a cube. I'm going to hit Tab to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to move it out along the X axis, ensuring that I'm doing this in edit mode such that my origin stays centered. Because now I can hit Shift Space, unmaximize my view. Maybe move this over a little bit. I'm going to go over to the modifiers, add in a mirror modifier. And then I'm going to scale this way down like this. Uh, and then I'll go over here. I'm going to hit Delete. This back face, I'll just select it, hit X, and delete faces. I'm going to add in another edge loop right up to this edge. And then I'll deselect those ver vertices. I'm going to Alt right click, or Alt shift right click to select that one. I'm going to hit G and Y, pull this along the Y axis. And then maybe I'll add in another edge loop right along here. And another one right along. Actually, you know what? Rather than doing that, I'm just going to select this. I'm going to hit Control Shift Tab, or Control Tab, go to edge mode. 
I'm going to select all the perimeter edges here on this face. I'm going to hit Shift E and 0.8. Actually, uh, let's do point or let's do Shift E and one. Going to take it all the way up to one because then we'll add in our subsurf modifier. This will only need level one on. We'll go to optimal display, and that looks pretty good. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to move it over here. Move it up like this. Or actually, you know what, let's do this. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this manually. Uh, you know, because we're really not going to see anything that we need to do on this. Uh, no, actually, you know what, we really ought to go ahead and do this with an array modifier. So, what I will do is let's go ahead and hit tab to leave edit mode. We're going to hit control alt shift C origin to geometry, which you notice will mess up our mirror modifier. But without moving our cursor, let's go and hit shift A, add in an empty. And this empty, then we can go in here and we're getting in a bad habit of not naming stuff, but we'll name this anyway. And this will be um, empty underscore grill underscore mirror. And because what we're going to do is now we'll select this grill mesh, which we can go ahead and name this as uh, geo underscore. Actually, this really ought to be uh, vent intake. I believe these would be the intakes. And so we ought to go ahead and rename this. And this will be the vent underscore intake mirror. Or we'll do vent in mirror. And so now I can select this and on my mirror modifier. Select the mirror object, and I'll choose this as the empty vent in mirror. And so now rather than using the origin, it uses this point. Because now with this setup here, I can go ahead and move this over along the x-axis. And I can go and hit sh or add in a another modifier, add an array. I'll go ahead and move that array above the subsurf, just so the subsurf is applied last. I can change it to relative, or I can choose relative count, increase it up to, say... Uh, let's do 1.025, and then I can just increase the count, which is, that's odd. Oh, we actually need to do this above the, the mirror modifier. There we go. And now that will just boost like that. And maybe we'll go ahead and hit Shift S, cursor to selected, Shift A, add in an empty. And this will be the empty underscore vent underscore in array. Because then we can select this and on the we'll decheck, uncheck the relative offset, choose the object offset, and choose our array empty. On this array, then I can just pull this out. Whoops, wrong one. Select this one, pull it out along the x-axis, and that will automatically position those. I can go ahead and rotate them down such that it follows the shape. In fact, let's go and do that. So let's move this object. Let's select both the array or the empty and the object so that they're relative to each other. Let's go into edit mode, select everything, and S and Z, scale them down along the Z axis. And then I will go ahead and rotate this and the empty. You need to be sure to um, modify them together such that all your modifications are relative. There we go. And then I can go ahead, I'll increase the count. I kind of like that spacing. And then I will just rotate this around to roughly fit there. Select both these, pull them up along the z-axis and along the x-axis, maybe about like that. Let's go hit. Uh, let's also rotate these uh, in edit mode. Go in and rotate them around the uh, let's see. Let's hit change the manipulator over to normal. Or actually, I guess that ought to be local. There we go. So change it to local, then we can hit R, double tap Z, rotate them around like that. And there we go. So then that creates those vents. Then we can go ahead and select this. And we'll select the empty as well. Shift D to duplicate them. And you notice that my array here has automatically adjusted to fit this array or this empty. And if I now select this empty, and I can say vent in underscore array. in low or vent low underscore array. There we go. 
And then in fact, we'll rename this one also to, to high. There we go. And you'll notice that these have automatically updated to change that so that you don't have to go in and do that manually. Then we can go ahead, select both of these, rotate them around to roughly match our beginning angle here. We can select the empty, rotate it less, increase the count on the array to go all the way down to there. Maybe make that match just a little bit better. And then we will duplicate this again. In this case, I'm not going to worry about renaming it. And I want to match approximately to right here. And then I will rotate this down a little bit. I'll select both these. Bring it in just a little bit. I just want just enough on here to get these first couple rotations around there. I'm going to take the count way down, something like that. Then I will duplicate these again, bring it down, go in here, increase my count, take my empty, and rotate this way down like this. I can also go ahead and select my object, uh, and in edit mode, scale it along the local z-axis to make it a bit thinner. Bring it in a bit more. Maybe not rotate this one quite, or yeah, about in there. And then I will take this here and increase the count a few more. And that's starting to get pretty close, but you can see that obviously, first off, this doesn't need to be rotated nearly so much. And I need to go ahead and reposition these around the, or uh, along the x-axis. So I'll first select, say, this one. Or actually, let's go ahead and I'm just going to select all of these in here. There we go. Then I can deselect just that. And I'm going to move them up along the x-axis. And I'll first select this, or along the y-axis. Then I'll select this one, move it up, line it up about right in here. Select this one. And in fact, actually, I'll go ahead and select, say, this object and this one. Select both empties, move them up to that starting point, then I'll select this, move it up a little bit, select both of these, move them up, and then I'll select just the empty, and move it up. And there we go. Uh, and then you'll notice that this is hiding right in here. And so now I'm going to do something a little clever, at least, or at least I'll cross my fingers to hope this works. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add in a mask modifier. Or, okay, never mind, that doesn't work. N or wait, actually. Nope, never mind. Okay, ignore what I was going to do. Uh, instead, I'm just going to go in here and we're going to move this slightly along the x-axis about like that just a little bit such that they're all inside. So now what this has done is not only added in these vents fairly easily, but it also means that whenever we go to say, if we were to texture this later down the road, or if you choose to texture it, you can actually go in and also let's move this just a tiny bit along the axis. You can go in here, select this, unwrap just this one piece, and then all of these will be unwrapped as well. And in fact, let's go ahead and just so that these are consistent, we should actually be able to go in here and let's go to the object and that's the vent. Go over to, to the vert, the object data and you can see the mesh data that it's using. Let's go ahead and rename this to vent uh, grills and then we can select this and we can change this to vent grills and this one as well and these other ones. And so what they're now doing is all of these are using the exact same mesh. So if I were to scale this up, or actually if I were to say, uh, add in an edge loop there, then you'll notice that that edge loop has been replicated across all of them, even though these are now separate objects that I can use at will. And you also notice that we have a mirror or we have a subsurf modifier in here. So we actually need to add in, say an edge loop up, or actually, you know what, rather than doing that, Let's hit control tab, go into vertex mode. Let's select this, hit X, delete the faces, and select all this, and delete the faces, 
And there we go. That'll save us some poly counts too. So like I said, you know, now we've got all of these in here that are completely, they're independent of each other, but they're also reliant on each other such that we can go in and texture them all very easily from a single mesh, including even just going in here, adding in some extra edges so that we don't have a rounded off back. And there we go. And it looks pretty sweet. But you know, the only thing is we've got all these empties in the way. So let's maybe just go ahead and select all these now. And we're just going to hit M and move to layer two. We can also do that with this one up here that we are using on the, the fans here. So now we'll just save that. And somehow I added in a grease pencil stroke. So I'll just ignore that. And you can also, some of you may be wondering about these here. These are for the Thea render engine. And the only reason that you see them is just because I happen to have the the add-on enabled and so those properties are being added you can see if i change my render over and over to thea then uh i can change those and so these actually show up if the modifier is enabled at all or excuse me if the add-on is enabled okay and there we go and okay i'm i'm gonna step back i really don't like those creases that i added so i'm gonna smooth these back out as best i can Slide that back just a little bit. And let's just select it, hit Shift H. Apologize for the back and forth there, but sometimes what maybe looked like a good idea really just wasn't such a good idea. And so I will just smooth these back out as best as I can. They were really just bugging me. It just didn't look finalized enough. And you know, I can do, I'm going to select this edge loop, we're going to hit X and delete edge loop. I'm then going to select these ones and hit Shift E and 1 to bring that down. And then I can also select this entire inside edge, Shift E and 1, and that will then clean that up. So now I can actually delete these extra edges, Shift E and 1, and sharpen those up very nicely rather than having these extra ones in here. And we could even make that a little better if we select this edge here, shifty e and say 0.8, then that will clear up quite nicely. Let's select this uh, control E edge slide, bring it over a bit. And here, this ought to be nice and round, same thing here. Okay, now I can hit Alt H to unhide everything. And now I'll just do some subtle tweaks to make this a little better. Just like this, Control E, edge slide. There we go, that looks a whole lot better and it gives me rough, or actually a, a better result using the creases in there than I was getting previously. Might go ahead and pull this up and maybe I'll add in one more loop there. Take this edge, slide it back, slide this a little bit along, scale it down along the Z axis a little bit. Alt S to scale out a little, scale this out a little bit, take these edges and these, pull them up. There we go. That looks really good. So we'll save that. And I believe we can go ahead. Oh, actually one last thing. I'm going to go in here, deselect this edge and just hit E to extrude takes back along the X axis, deselect these and just snap that down to right there. And there we go. It just finishes off that edge right there. And I believe that's it. So these will actually merge in behind those. So we're gonna save our file and call that quits for this section. That completes the paneling right in here. And we're making 
really good progress. Although one thing I might do, just to make these a little bit more aerodynamic, I'm going to select these loops. I'm going to pull them over, or actually end those. I'm going to pull them over like this. Same thing here. Deselect that one. Deselect those and that, and then I'll pull this along like that. I'll select this loop, pull it back, and same thing there. In fact, maybe I'll slide this up along there, and then I'll select this one, Control E. Oops. Slide that up. And there we go. And then I can also add in, say, another loop right up to there. Take it down along the z-axis a bit. Maybe I will select all these loops. I'll pull that down along the z-axis there. And maybe I'll actually select this one, and this one, pull it in along the x-axis a little bit. Then I'll select, say, this one right there. I'll pull it out along the x-axis and do the same thing here, just so we've got a little bit nicer fitting mesh right in there. Okay, and then lastly, I will also take this front section right here, and I'll just take it forward Take that forward, and I'll slide down that loop. Take these down along the z-axis just a little bit, right in there. And there we are. And actually, you know what, just so this is consistent, we ought to go ahead and rotate this, bring it up here, take this. Actually, we'll rotate these back down a little bit, just making them match the windshield. Take this, extrude it down, and then I'll extrude it in a little bit along the y-axis. I can go ahead and select all these. Rotate it a bit more just to fit that so that you can actually see an edge right there. Because believe it or not, those little things will actually show up a, a fair bit in the render time as far as, you know, where light is catching those highlights and such. And maybe we'll go ahead and I'm going to turn off the auto merge editing for a moment. Then I'm going to hit Control e edge slide, take this all the way down. Then I'll slide this back up. Also select this loop, Control e edge slide, bring that up to there, and then I'll slide it back just a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these edges to say 0.5 and this one to 0.5 because that will actually catch the light really well. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add in a loop right there, take it all the way up, slide it down along the Z axis, then I'll hit Shift E and 0.8 on these ones. Add in say another loop here, And maybe on this one, I will pull this down along the z-axis a bit more. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Maybe I'll slide this back just a little bit. Then I'll add in, oops, I'm not gonna add in a loop on that one, but I will select this edge. And I'm gonna hit Shift E and point, actually we're gonna go ahead and do Shift E, zero, and then Shift E and point eight. Slide that, I'll select, that one's already got one. And that should be good because those kinds of edges will catch the light uh, pretty significantly actually to give a nice result. And let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So there we go. Uh, I think that will pretty much I may select this loop. I'll hit Control E, edge slide. Just slide it a little closer to make that a little bit sharper and nicer. That looks good over there. I can do the same thing with this one. And I'm going to call that quits. So I'll save my file uh, and actually, yes, save the file and then we will come back on the next part to do a lot of the, the gruesome modeling right in here. So look forward to it and see you in just a little while.